The battle begins in round two of Cold Classic or Demon Flop. Okay, welcome to a Smurf P video and today we are looking at Hex Season 2 and then I will decide, in my opinion, if it's a cult classic or a demon flop. So um, I wanted to clarify, in my first video I said there was uh, 10 episodes in Season 2. No, we get a smacking 13 episodes, meaning we finish up with 18 episodes in total. So that's almost a whole Buffy series. Um, <laughs> so let's get on and talk about this show. Okay, so Hex Season 2 starts off really strongly. There's Nephilim 3. So we're finally seeing some monsters. There's a new player in town called Ella. And basically her job was to kill any body... I guess stupid enough to get pregnant by Azazel. However, she missed this one. She missed Cassie's one. So when she's arrives, it's too late, basically. There's some new talent, I guess, thrown into the mix for this season, as well as Ella. You've got Tom, which is Leon's buddy. And you also get um, Priest Jazz. And some woman who barely speaks, who's like Roxanne's side lady, I guess is the word. So... Why does it fall apart? You've got a solid cast. We're picking up from the second season. We're starting to finally see some monsters. There's some real action. We're seeing guts getting ripped out, slit throats, etc. And it's going swimmingly well. Here's where it starts to fall apart for in the early part of the season. They made the move to make Ella the main cast woman or the main lady for the cast and Cassie whose child she has said you know we're talking about a toddler by this point has been tasked with hey we've got to kill your kid so she naively Ellie naivety doesn't understand humans I don't think one stands emotion so she allows Cassie to bond with the child big mistake so when it comes to the whole sacrifice thing Part of the second episode, only two episodes in, she sacrificed herself. Cassie's dead, straight out of action. So we've lost one main cast character. Why? It it's it's a great plan in this early stage and a, and a great story. But sorry, you could have put her to the side if you wanted a Buffy the Vampire Slayer kind of heroine woman, and that's what Ella brings to the show. You know, there's lots of things to explore with Cassie. She's new to telekinesis. There's loads of stuff, you know. It just really bugged me up the wrong way. So, the Nephilim are quite ferocious creatures and, and quite grotesque. So, I'll give them kudos for this. You know, they completely designed something completely different. And um, it's pretty quite awesome. I mean, just look at that. The artwork on that is amazing. So from this perspective, damn brilliant. Oh, and that's Ella, by the way. And they're best friends. Oh, and they've also got some weird teacher called Jez, and he's also a priest, and he's sleeping with Roxanne. That's pretty, pretty strange, even on this scale. Okay, so episodes four to six were probably the best episodes of this whole series. It was like they truly not knew what they were doing. So first of all, Ella is poisoned by St. John's Ward by Jez, the evil uh, priest, Nephilim, whatever you want to call him, and Azazel. So they're really gunning for her. We also see a real torrid pass where I'm not sure if she's seeing things but I'm pretty sure it's the past where Azazel set her up to be a witch so she gets tortured and 
brutalized and it's quite quite grotesque and um, hard to watch at some points um, it's not that bad but it's it you know it sends chills on your thing so with them gunning for them they basically end up with Ella becoming instituted into a psych ward where she has her own guess what private nurse a Nephilim evil fairy who's just dosing her up basically all the time so it's down to Leon who Felma has revealed actually no I think at this point she's jumping into his dreams and she's telling him to save her so he becomes a hero and saves her meanwhile Jez is made principal of the school because the old principal Colin Salmon I can't remember his name in the show is goes up against governors because he doesn't agree what happens with Ella at this point and yeah it's pretty cool so he's running a show and they're really starting to get a grip on the good guys they're they're making their life hell at this point so after they escape and they go on the run basically and it's quite um brutal i would say um a friend who's been helping him i think he's called max gets his ear cut off etc etc so that they can find out so they're on the run and it's pretty cool and i like the direction that this show was going at that point however we move on to <clears throat> from episodes seven to nine this really peed me off so just as things uh heating up episode seven it starts to flop so ella leon and velma who leon can now see have snuck back into the school and you know they're kind of like underground it's kind of cool and as azil decides i've been told i've got to leave malachi and I'm not going to see you to adulthood. And that's the end of Michael Fassbender in this series. What the hell were you thinking? Oh my god. And not only that, one main bad guy's gone who, you know, <sighs> Jez is a spoiler alert, murdered by Ella, which was going to happen at some point because. He poisoned her and made her suffer in great, great lengths. But it really, really did. I'm trying not to swear. <laughs> Cheese me off. What the hell? Right, so moving on. Malachi has decided that he's going to go to school at this place. And we see him start to make googly eyes at Ella. And she's kind of making googly eyes back to him. So they have a duel to the death, which... She spares him when she could have finished the whole thing. She spares him. So there is a higher power that enters into the fray. And they tell them to stay apart. But they're not doing it. So they punish them. So Ella is blighted by a plague. Which is quite gruesome. Defigures her face. And Malachi is made blind. Meanwhile, Leon, um, after, you know... His love for Ella, etc., is kind of shunted to the side, which um, I was greatly disappointed because their development relationship was kind of nice. And in those three episodes where she was hop hospitalized, etc., he really came through for her. So for her to turn her back on him so quickly, it kind of bugged me. Uh, Meanwhile, um, Felma gets a new lesbian girlfriend, dead girlfriend, thanks to Marikai killing off a girl. She just gets run over. So they start having a relationship. <laughs> Although that secret that he did it so she could have a girlfriend hasn't surfaced yet. And I'm sure it will surface before the end. So we've got four episodes to go. Let's see what happens. Episodes 10 to 12. Okay, so... Things are rapidly out of control. So first of all, in the first episode, you get Ella under the control of Malachi now that they've done the deed. Uh, however, later on in that episode, obviously, she's googly eyes with him. 
Leon ends up in trouble and Malachi is basically going to kill him because, well, that's what he does. He kills people because he's the Dark Lord of the Sith. He's not really. But anyway, he decides to kill him and the bad guy who is like the making sure that everything is ticking along in terms of them, the evil being released, etc., actually likes Leon and says, he shouldn't die. We're quite fond of him. So he helps Thelma save Ella. Then Ella goes in and saves Leon from the big crawling monster. And it's pretty cool. You know, the, the monster is absolutely horrendous. It's quite disgusting. And that's what makes this show different is that all these kind of monsters, they're very similar, etc. I could see where Torchwood got its idea for a weas weasel. If I said that correctly. Right, so anyway, moving along. So, Ella decides she's going to kill Malachi now. Now that she's back. She's going to do, finally do him. And not in a way that they're making sweet love on the bed. So, she goes to kill him. She can't. She stabs him and the knife snaps. His body is now impervious. And there's a reason for this. Because he has been gathering followers. Such as Felma's girlfriend, Maya... He is getting stronger and more and more invulnerable. So the plan is Ella kills Maya or chops off her head. That's the only way to release the ghost form apparently and release the curse. And also Leon is going to kill Alex. Who the hell's Alex? That's right. Pretty much the first half of the season she was nobody. Now all of a sudden she's Malachi's evil girlfriend or whatever so anyway before this happens Velma is as always tricked to reveal some details to Malachi um, she doesn't do that I don't well what I remember I did actually watch the show believe it or not and she comes clean with Maya about what happened and how she died which was quite you know it Malachi killed her so that she could have a girlfriend so it all goes wrong why Ella tried to kill, tried to do the Maya job and not Leon is beyond me. She sent Leon to kill Alex. Leon's, he's the soft, he's the good guy. You don't send him to go chop somebody's head off. He doesn't want to do it. So <laughs> that leads us. So basically when Ella goes to confront Malachi, she realizes that Leon hasn't done it. And Malachi says, you're going to have to do a hell of a lot better than that. Because I've turned the whole school into my followers. He's pretty much shielded himself to the core. He is running this school. This school is becoming the demon. Hell, should I say. Okay, so episode 12. So what's happened is uh, Joe here, who was under Azazil's influence, returned to school. And she has hooked up with Malachi, clearly. And she's framed David for clearly taking funds out of the school, etc. So she is now the headmistress, giving Malachi full run of the school. Also, Tom loves Leon. And Malachi set him up with his own mark, which is how you can see it on his neck there. That's how you kind of identify that somebody is a Malachi follower, etc. Or under his influence. So this leads to... So, Duped into killing his best friend. Leon then becomes one of Malachi's followers. Now Tom may have been a bad character, but he was an important one to Leon's life, hence the importance of the act. And for Malachi to gain control of Leon. Okay, with Leon going on Dark Phoenix and being part of Malachi's plan, 
Ella frees herself after being poisoned and it's a desperate escape. And Femo goes all badass on Malachi to save the day. Just in the nick of time. So let's head into the finale and see how this all ends. A finale such as Hex deserves a win as well. And a dressing gown. Okay, the finale is pretty cool. I did dig the finale. First of all, Velma dresses up as an angel. It's pretty cool. And she convinces Roxanne, who is paying for her sins, to do a good deed for God. Yes, we're getting into the whole God versus demons world now. And it's about getting Ella's pendant back. And she does that well by playing on Malachi's um, whims, I guess. She is the only one in the school that has not been taken over and under his ferrol. And I said that completely wrong, but I, you know, under his control, I cannot say the damn word. Um, so terribly sorry there. So all in all, Leon is still captive. And as you know, or you may not know, I can't remember if I said this. The only way to get these people free is to actually kill them and cut off their heads. So, Velma and Ella get a, give him something to dose him up and he falls asleep. And Velma enters his dream. And obviously, in true Hex fashion, she does cut off her head. He's wee little man's head. Which is pretty, pretty damn genius. And he snaps out of it and he's free. Which is great. So, on to the next phase of Ella's plan. She's now got the pendant and she is going to rewrite time. She knows that there is no way to defeat Malachi. He's too powerful. So she goes back in time to when he's um, in the incubator in the... What's it? The intensive care ward, sorry. I lost my trail of thought then. And she has to fight Fairy Lady, who was guarding him. Somehow Malachi knew that this may be a play and sent her back there to protect him. And ultimately, Ella gets one over on Fairy Lady. And she is about to kill Malachi when she remembers. So before Leon left, he did leave. He said, I'm leaving. You've got no heart, you, you know, you're not a good person, basically. She remembers those words. And she realizes she does have that heart. And she hesitates just for that moment. And Fairy Girl comes in there and she stabs her. Right in the goodies. But with the knife, Ella put all of her sorrows, etc. into this knife. Magically, somehow. So... Not only is she bleeding to death, this thing is absolutely killing her with agony, which is pretty, pretty original. Okay, so Malachi's realized what Roxanne's done, and his followers swarm on her like a pack of hyenas, and they capture her, and she is going to be the sacrifice for the end of days. Now, these last few scenes are brilliant. There's not a big fight scene in this episode other than the Ella very fight it is pretty much I've won and he sacrificed her the school burns down Ella Thelma and Leon are on the run for their lives and it ends with pretty much hell is unleashed at this point so why was it cancelled after two seasons there could be lots of reasons I've you know I've got lots of thoughts on this but um, I, I have a feeling that if this was on Netflix and had the social media exposure to it that we have now, and plus the the people that like this stuff, there are so many more out there. There are so many more communities. You bet there would be a Facebook page about this, a Twitter feed on this. You know, it would work now. And, and I feel like not without this, The Vampire Diaries, because obviously that was a book long before then, but those sort of shows that are really, really strong and popular, 
I think the Vampire Diaries and the original has just ended, but, you know, fantastic shows. This would be there if this was released today. And it would have got a third season. I have no doubt about that. Okay, so... I felt season two was a really good season. But I think they tried to do too much. And I would off at the time, I think I would have carried on with the Azazel and Jez evil versus the whole Ella thing. And they could have run with that throughout the rest of the last sort of six episodes. Maybe they just tried to do too many episodes when they should have just maybe kept it a bit more shorter and sweeter. Maybe it would, would have worked out better for them. I think the whole Malachi thing, I think they could have pushed that to a season three. And that could have been the development of that season. And then it would have made sense for Azazel to be perhaps killed or something at the end of season two. You know, a, you know, a, a Buffy versus Angel battle of season two. Not try and compare them or anything. But it just seemed like it was so fantastic. And then I just felt... Don't get me wrong, I liked it, but... Just from that point, I thought it was going downhill for me. So, Hex, cult classic or demon flop? I'll give it. I've not seen anything is like this show since. It is original, in my mind. Some of the stuff that happens with it, from the Ella Plague to the whole um, printing in a psychiatric ward, etc. The whole Azazel. You know, there were, there were some real great characters in this show. I just felt season two, the first six episodes were absolutely astonishing, you know. It was going in a brilliant direction, even with the Cassie death that bugged me to begin with. And it just fell from there because they took Azazel out of it, they took Jez out of it. And they didn't give... Roxanne went into the backlight, you know, and, you know... Fair enough, the Malachi Ella story was kind of cool, but I don't think it was enough. They tried to do, I've said this already, they tried to do too much in that final part of the season instead of letting it gradually grow and keeping core characters. If you don't have core characters moving on in a show, I feel like it it burns, and this really did burn. However, the ending of season two, it left me wanting more. I wanted more. And it's a shame we didn't get more, even just a, a, a film to round it all off, etc. They left it on this little clear, cliffhanger with Velma, Ella and Leon on the run. Roxanne's dead. Tom's had his head cut off. And it's just Malachi, Alex and his followers, basically. Oh, and Joe as well. So, if it was given a season three... I think it would have been cool, and I hope that it didn't, I, I really hope that it didn't make too many changes like it did in season two, and it grew. I would have liked to see uh, Michael Fassbender back as Azazel, because he was amazing in this show. You know, he's an amazing actor, and um, even the actress that played Cassie, uh, Christina Cole, you know, I would have liked her to be more in the show. She was cut out very, very soon. Too soon. Well, I understand why they did it. They wanted to show the sacrifice, the, the human element to it, and there was a lot of dramatic, dramatic, dramatic. So, but what is my verdict um, after spending a gruelly 40 minutes off watching two episodes of me yapping about Hex? Um, I'm going to give this a cult classic title because... Even though it flopped, it still is an original show and it stands alone and I think you could watch it now, okay? You could probably say it's a bit silly now watching it, but I like it still and that's my verdict, that's my opinion and you can challenge me all you like. Um, I'll just delete your comments. No, I'm joking. I don't do stuff like that. Um, so thank you for watching. Embrace the geekiness. Like my Facebook page, Smurd P. Like, comment, subscribe. And take care. Goodbye.
think he might have other things on his mind.